Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman and Color Valley Cooks. We are going to talk about Psalms 6 today, so if you have a Bible, go get it and turn to Psalm 6, and we will review that in just a minute. It's good to see y'all this morning. It is 11 o'clock on a Friday, and um, I've had a wonderful morning. I slept a little later than I normally do. Um, I've gotten out my cookbooks and got them packaged and out at the mailbox, and I plan on um, doing a fruitcake today for real, y'all. I really am. <laughs> Yesterday, um, I left with Amy, and we had a good time, and so today, uh, I don't plan on doing anything but staying here and making a fruitcake. So, anyway, this psalm is Psalm 6 in your Bibles, and it is a prayer of faith in time of distress. And uh, the girl describes it that, does, you know, that, that helped with this Bible study book, this women's Bible study book. It says, um, to the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. So, um, Jewel says it's 8.10 here in Portland, Oregon. Wow, it's still early for you, isn't it? Um, I guess it's good that I come in here a little later because some of y'all that are out west can watch and it's not be so early. Um, the girl tells us that the seven pentacle um, psalms recognized by the ancient church deal particularly with the nature of sin and forgiveness. And I'm... I'm kind of giving you a summary of what we're about to talk about, okay? It says that the type of, you can see the chart, the type of Psalms. So if we flip back to her, to this chart of Psalms, there is one, it's called, um, It says their prayers centering upon the nature of sin and forgiveness. And it gives us references of the different psalms we can read that, that are like this. And this is one that we are going to read today. And it's Psalm 6. Um, the other psalms, if you got a pencil and you want to write them down, that talk about the nature of sin and forgiveness is Psalm 6, Psalms 32, Psalms 38, 51, 102, 130, and 143. I'll do that one more time. Psalm 6, 32, 38, 51, 102, 130, and 143. Um, if you want to take a look at the different ones. Today we're just going to be reading Psalm 6, okay? But she goes on to say that the psalmist appealed to God's gracious mercy because his bones, literally, literally meaning his entire being, were troubled. In Hebrew thought, such suffering was generally connected directly with sin. So we don't normally, like when I first looked at this and it said a prayer of faith in times of distress, uh, we don't even think about our sin like we should because this is actually talking about our sin and that's what's causing our distress um, and so many of us just think about everyday things that make us distressed and it could you know some of it could be that we have uh, sin in our heart and that's one reason we feel so bad um, so we're going to try to learn from this today says that uh, the psalmist's petition for healing constituted a plea for forgiveness. For God to hear the psalmist's prayer confirming it confirmed forgiveness and victory, shifting the mood of the poem in contrast. Um, it says the psalmist did not assert his innocence. Rather, he appealed to the gracious nature of God for forgiveness. Um, and that's a big deal, y'all, because let's just say we got up sad today. Let's say we got up gloomy and down today. Or let's say that we're having problems with our money. Or we're having problems with our husband or our wife. 
and or our children and their times of distress. Uh, so many of us would be uh, take the attitude that nothing was our fault, that it was all the fault of everything around us, and it was not didn't have anything to do with us. And this is teaching us to think about ourselves on the inside and to look at ourselves and um, do a checkup, in other words, and see our sin and ask the Lord for forgiveness and not pretend that we're innocent. Um, and if we feel like we're so innocent, then we need to think about the, the fact that we're not. Um, so many of us sin every day and we don't even realize we're sinning um, partly because we're not in the Word of God, partly because we're not in tune with the Holy Spirit. And um, it's just hard for us to see our faults, okay? And when we can actually see our faults, it helps us. Let me just say this. I remember years ago when me and Chris used to go to church, we went every time the doors were open. And I was young. And um, gosh, I was probably, let me think about how old I probably was. I was probably in my 30s, in my early 30s, okay? And I can remember sitting on the pew. And I can remember them getting up and singing songs and saying um, things about, like, how we didn't deserve God's love and how we deserved, um, how we weren't deserving, okay? And I can remember sitting in that pew and in my heart thinking, yes, we are deserving, you know, if we weren't deserving, he wouldn't send his son here to die for us. But it was an arrogant thought that I had. Even if I couldn't see my faults and the fact that I wasn't deserving, I mean, I was saved at the time. I just wasn't a, uh, what would you call it? I just didn't have enough meat in other words, I had not read enough of the Bible to realize how undeserving I really was. Now, you can sit here and you can um, pretend like listening to a pastor every Sunday and Wednesday night or listening to it on TV or going into these little Bible studies that women have. Get your heart right. But I have to say that nothing, nothing gets our heart right like reading the Word of God. OK, so just because you go to church on Sunday, just because you read your Sunday school book, just because you follow a women's Bible study book every day and you have a um, devotional, that is not what brings us close to God. And I know this is a Bible study, but what you have to realize is I'm not wanting y'all to just listen to me. And my Bible studies consist of reading the Word of God because I don't want to hear what other people think about the Word of God. I want to hear what God says, okay? And when you get in His Word, your faith increases. And not only that, but you realize how spiritual and how wonderful and how um, big God is and how this picture of us on earth is a lot smaller than we realize and how we are undeserving. And I didn't know all of that until I read the Word of God. I mean, I could have sat in church and sat in school and sat in devotions and sat and do, done all this stuff for years. And I did. But until I actually got uh, into the Word of God, it, it didn't dawn on me who I really was. Um, Jewel says, sometimes I find the Bible complicated and some of it, not all of it. Jewel, that's absolutely normal. And let me just say this. Um, when we read the Word of God, each of us will get something out of us that the other one didn't. Now, that does not mean that we are to interpret it differently. Because the Word of God is the Word of God. And it's black and white. And it's right. And it's real every time somebody reads it. But the difference is... Um, we each have a Holy Spirit, and he's going to talk to us differently. Now, as far as the doctrine that's in the Bible, it's always the same. 
you can't misinterpret the doctrine. And let me just say this. If God thinks that something is important, like a subject, he will repeat it over and over in the word of God. And he will repeat it enough that we don't have to be unclear on what it means. Now, the small things that people want to argue or talk about doesn't even matter because if God felt like it was important for us to know it, he would have made it very clear and wouldn't have left it cloudy. And so we need to realize that as well. Um, the best thing that we can do is pick up the Bible and just read it. Just read it and get what you can out of it. The hardest parts to read and get something out of are when they talk about the lineage of Christ and they're reading name after name after name after name. Um, but they're doing that to show you that he, it, he has a true lineage. Okay, so it's important in the word of God for it to be there. Now, let me say this. Some of us want to say that the word of God is not spiritual, that it was pinned down by man. Therefore, it's stories. Let me just say that's crazy. And you will never know how spiritual it is until you get in the book and start reading it for yourself. Because a man could have never pinned down the lineage of Christ without the help of the Holy Spirit. There's just no way. Um, and there's so many things in here that tie together from the Old Testament into the New Testament that there's just no way a man could have pinned it. There's just no way. And, and he had to have spiritual help to do this. Um, and you will not realize that until you start reading it. And a lot of people suggest that you don't read it in uh, order of Genesis down to Revelation. Well, I did. Okay. And no, that's not the order the Bible was written in. Like some of the oldest books are Job and uh, books like that. But that doesn't matter. You don't have to know chronologically how the Bible was put together and all that. Um, there was a reason why the Holy Spirit led these men to place the books of the Bible in the order that they're in. There's nothing wrong with starting in the book of Genesis and going through. And the reason I say that, just the book of Genesis is full of so much helpful information, wonderful stories of God uh, blessing his people. And then you also see just in the book of Genesis that God is not just a God of love. He is a jealous God and he is a just God. And where there's justice, there's punishment. And you need to understand that uh, it is real. Okay. So I just encourage you to get in there and read it because it will change you. It will change your life will change the way you look at things. So let's look at this today as if we are guilty, because we are guilty, y'all. I can remember asking my granny one time, did she sin? And she said, no, I don't sin. I'm saved. And I said, granny, just because you're saved, it doesn't mean you don't sin. We're still in our earthly vessels. We still think things we shouldn't think and say things we shouldn't say. So just remember that we're never, we can strive not to sin, but we're never perfect. We're not perfection. We're not Jesus Christ. Even with the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we still live here on this earth. We're exposed to things of, that's in the that's in the world. Um, the devil doesn't attack us personally because he's only one person that can. Well, he's only one angel can only be in one place at a time. But how he does it is he set the world up to be a temptation for us. Just like it was back in the olden time in the Old Testament, they looked they look to Egypt as the world. And every time a man went towards that area, went into that area, he sinned and he fell into sin, even the best of them. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are in this life, you can fall. So we have to put our guard up. And we have to realize that we're not perfect. Okay, that's why we need a Savior. That's why we needed Christ. That's why we needed Jesus to come here. Because we're not perfect. 
and we're never going to be until we get to heaven, okay? Um, so let's read Psalm 6, and let's think about what he's saying, and think about ourselves and the sin in our lives and how we can be cleansed and forgiven, okay? It says, O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. O oh, save me for your mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. And that's the psalm. Boy, is that not amazing. This is David, y'all, a king, a man who had everything in the world, a man who's wealthy, a man who has all of the worldly possessions. A man who has plenty of wife, you know, he has a wife, he has lots of children, he has everything. Now, we like to sit in our homes and sit by ourselves, feel sorry for ourselves, and I'm just as guilty as you are. The minute Chris left to go to Florida, I started getting depressed. And I thought to myself, Lord, if something happened to him, what would I do? I would have to tie up my boots, you know, tie up my shoe laces and, and move on. And it would be really, really hard because just him leaving to go to Florida makes me depressed. So I'm not any different than any of y'all as far as that goes. I'm a woman. I get depressed. I worry. I wonder, I wonder about my teenagers and who will they marry and will they find a good Christian husband and will he be good to them? And um, I, I mean, there's just so many things that we can consume our mind with. But do we pray as much as we worry? Do, I don't. Do I pray to God that my, that my girls would marry a Christian man? Sure I do, but I don't enough. Um, do I pray that Chris would be safe when he's in Florida instead of feeling sorry for myself or get depressed? It We have to realize what's important. We have to realize that God is real and we have to realize that he should be number one in our lives and we should give him the glory and honor that he deserves. He deserves all of it. And we should go to him and ask him. And this is, like I was telling y'all, when you read the word of God, you're going to see that God will rebuke and he will chastise us. And we deserve it. We deserve it. And so think about David, King David, writing this and saying, my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, and deliver me. Oh, save me for your mercy's sake, for in death there is no remembrance of you. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? None of us can thank God after we're gone. None of us after we die. So we need to give him thanks now. And this is just amazing to me that he's weary with groaning. He makes his bed swim 
from at night. That means he's not resting well. He drenches his couch with tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. Can you believe that a king would feel this way? And y'all, this was a man after God's own heart. This was a man who God truly, truly loved. And he was a man that was open-faced with God. He didn't hide anything. He let God know who he was. He let God know that he was guilty and that he knew he sinned. And he, he just was open. And these Psalms are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces of work. So I encourage you. I don't want this to be, if anything, this should not be depressing to you. This should be encouraging because we need to look at ourselves and we need to understand that we have sin in our lives and that we need to clean ourselves up and we need to look more to God. We need to pray more to God. We need to read his word in order to be happy, in order to have joy, in order to see what's important in our life. Okay. Um, and I was telling you all about reading the word of God. It can be confusing. Let me say this. God, this book is spiritual. So unless you're born again and saved, when you pick up this book, it is going to be foreign to you. If for any reason you feel like you're not born again or you're not saved or you can't remember the day that you were saved, then send me a message. I have a really good uh, video on salvation and being born again, and it's not posted anymore, but I can repost it. I think I need to repost that. And uh, because without being born again, you cannot you cannot read the Bible and get what you need out of it because it is a spiritual thing. Um, so if you are saved and you know you're saved, you can get stuff out of this Bible. Even the King James Version, that's what I read. I love it. Um, it's written on a third grade level, y'all. It's not hard to understand. But the hardest part is the lineage and then the... Um, prophecies. Ooh, boy, they get really deep. These prophets are just amazing. The things that they say and and how they can see the future and and then revelation is really deep. But other than that, you should be able to read all of the books and get plenty out of them um, without having to be well studied. And you don't need to be well studied anyway, because this book is nothing more but talking about Jesus Christ. It's nothing more um, but the Word of God, which is Jesus Jesus Christ. It points to Him. Um, it is all about Jesus. It's not about whether or not there were dinosaurs in the world. It's not about um, all these stupid things that people want to bring out of it. It's about who Jesus Christ is. That's what it's about. Because my favorite verse is, In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And that word is Jesus Christ. He references the word in this Bible many, 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 many times. And he lets us know the word is Jesus Christ. So that's what this book is. All about Jesus. It is December. It is time to worship our Lord and Savior. And thank the Lord for sending him here for our sin. It is a beautiful time of the year. And um, I hope that you've been encouraged today. I pray that um, you will pick up your Bible and start to read it. Even if you just start with Genesis. Just pick it up and start reading it, y'all. Just just put, a, put aside a little bit of time every day. And get through this book. Do not, um, do not, um, I'm trying to think about what I want to say. Do not, um, feel like you have to understand everything you read. Because you will see that you will gain faith just by reading. Faith comes by uh, hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So the only way you're going to gain faith is through the word of God. A lot of people think they gain faith through things they've been through, through being sick. Look, I've had cancer. I know what it's like to go through it. I know what it's like to come out on the surviving end. Um, 
But that is not what gave me faith. My faith grew and continues to grow through the word of God. And you will realize how much when you start to read it, because then you realize how real he is and you see his promises and you see his blessings and you recognize them in your life. Um, because all it is is examples. Um, Y'all have a wonderful day. I'm not sure what's going on, but some people are saying, take me off of this. I don't know if somebody shared this or something to people. But anyway, let's say our prayers, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Word of God that points to Jesus Christ. We thank you for all you do for us each and every day. We pray that you would help us see our guilt, our sin, and that you would help um, us become closer to you and ask for forgiveness where we need it. Um, for sure, um, just be with us as we go throughout the day. Help us be strong and pray for our families. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I hope y'all have a wonderful day, and um, I'll see y'all later in the kitchen today. I love you all. Bye.